Hello, my name is Jonathan Jesse, Practice Principal with ITS Partners. I want to thank you for spending some time today watching this video, one in a series on semantic DLP. The video that you are about to watch will cover uh, just the basics of the DLP system. We'll spend some time logging in, navigating, showing a brief overview of policies, a uh, brief overview of incidences, uh, some of the information that contains within an incident, and then uh, how to escalate that incident or route that incident based on setting different policies or different uh, response rules, etc. We'll uh, dive deeper into the different into uh, other areas of the semantic DLP product as we go along in different videos. We'll have one that will specifically focus on network discover, setting up a network discover uh, scan, the different targets that we can use, some of the settings in configuring that. Uh, we'll look at some discover incidences as well. Uh, a third video that we'll do in the series will cover the endpoint and DLP on the endpoint. Um, how that might be a little bit different than using an endpoint protection product on the endpoint to secure endpoints from data loss prevention. How we can do notifications on the end user and prevention and pop-ups and report against those. We'll also spend some time in another video um, in depth on policies and how we can create different policies, some of the different policy templates that exist. Um, we'll cover the different technologies that Semantic DLP uses, whether that's an EDM or a DCM. We'll talk a little bit more, uh, more in depth about those. And then finally, we'll have a, a, a final video, perhaps the shortest of the videos that will talk about the different uh, servers, operating systems, how to configure that, uh, how to set up security and roles and and encryption, etc., within the platform. So, once again, I want to thank you for spending time on the uh, video here today, and let's go ahead and get started. One of the really nice portions of the Semantic DLP product is that everything can be done within a web browser, whether that's reporting on an incident, configuring a scan, writing my policies. Um, Anything and everything that I can do is through the web browser. I'm going to sign in as administrator. We'll talk about different security roles uh, a little bit later and how we can do that. So let's go ahead and get started. When I sign into the uh, DLP council, I'm presented with this dashboard here. And let's kind of talk our way through a couple of things. First of all, you can see the role and the user that I'm signed in. And then we have an executive summary of the different incidences that have occurred. Um, we can completely customize this dashboard. We can pull from all areas of, of the, the product, of the platform, and we can uh, report on that. What we're looking at right now is an executive summary on the endpoint. I can go ahead and change this here um, to a, a dashboard that shows an executive summary of uh, what's happening at my discover, my data at rest areas. And you can see that I have um, different types of reports that are set up. If I go into network monitor, now I don't have um, any good information in my demo environment uh, as it regards to network monitor, but we can summarize um, everything that we have here. Uh, high risk senders over the last 30 days. So I know that you know you know Joe Sh Smith at ITS uh, has been sending out a, a lot of information lately. We can also talk about who our recipient domains are, whether that's a .mil or a .gov, .com, um, and exactly which which uh, domain that would be in those areas. Uh, so if someone's sending a lot of email out to a, a .gmail.com address, it would show up here. Protocol summary, we'll talk a little bit about this later um, and the different protocols that we can use. But areas to pay attention to within Network Monitor for potential data loss include you know, HTTP, FTP, SMTP on the monitoring side. Uh, you might have a product out there that FTPs information out to a partner or, or and that was set up you know, six months, a year, maybe even longer, and it's emailing conf or FTPing out confidential data out to a, a third-party partner and you didn't know about it. Let's go ahead um, and talk real quick. I'm going to pull up Notepad here. Everybody laughs when I pulled Notepad up in a demo, but let's go ahead and open this up for a minute. And I want to make sure that that we understand um, 
the different areas that involve. I'm going to change the font so everybody can read it here real quick. Let's go ahead and make it pretty big. So one of the uh, really awesome parts in the semantic data loss prevention product is that uh, all three targets um, can be uh, managed, monitored, and controlled from the same area. And let me kind of explain what I'm talking about. The first area is that data in motion. All right, this is information that is flowing over the network. And if we look at it, the, the products that we are concerned about is network monitor and then network prevent for email and uh, prevent for web. Let's go ahead and uh, change that here so we can read it a little bit better. All right, so network prevent for web, network prevent for email, and network monitor. These are our three areas that deal with our data in motion. All right, this is data that is flowing over the network, and we can either do that uh, to external to clouds, so to the internet at your egress points, um, or if we're concerned about data flowing between sites, I have a site in Chicago, a site in, in San Francisco, a site in Grand Rapids. You know, the data that's flowing in between those sites that maybe it shouldn't. Uh, if I'm in a military organization, maybe uh, in between bases, et cetera, we could then set up a network monitor um, at those egress points. Network monitor is where most customers start, and this is where we're going to monitor that data. Give us a baseline to see exactly what type of data is flowing. Uh, the third, uh, the, sorry, the second area is our data at rest. Uh, this is data that sits at the file share level or the database level. Um, I have SharePoint out there. What's on my SharePoint sites? Um, here at ITS, our corporate drive is G. What's on that corporate drive? Do I know? Is it confidential data? We'll talk about that. So this is uh, Network Discover. and Network Protect. Um, a lot of fun names, got to make sure we keep them all straight in our head. Network Discover allows us to set up Discover targets, whether that Discover target is, is a Windows server, a Linux server, an Oracle database, uh, an Exchange box, a SQL server, a SharePoint server. Uh, we'll show some of the different targets that we can create, and especially in that second video, we'll spend more time on that. Um, but this allows me to then to discover t information that is on there. Uh, Network Protect actually allows me then to quarantine that file and, and move it to a different location. All right, let's talk about the endpoint. Um, we'll spend in a later video more in depth about uh, data at the endpoint and how that actually works within the Semantic DLP product. Um, this is the data that's on my laptop or desktop. Um, if you really want a scary fact, look up how many laptops are lost in LaGuardia or LAX, those two airports each day. Absolutely blows my mind. Um, it's in the thousands of laptops you know, that, that are, are lost at those airports combined. I, I don't quite understand it. Maybe the pressure of security uh, of going through that scanner or something confuses you um, and you lose your laptop. Um, more importantly, um, in a military organization, um, do we allow that data on the endpoint? Uh, do we allow a certain class of USB drives or, or US uh, removable media devices? Uh, what does our security say? Not necessarily just the military, but you know, at all corporations, how do we deal with uh, data at the endpoint? Um, so I have a laptop, I have a desktop. Um, how do we deal with maybe file print, copy paste, uh, removable media, uh, copying from a local drive to a corporate drive, copying from a network share to a local share, um, working within one application and then copying and pasting to another application? What's the plan behind that? How do we deal with that? How does that work within our existing endpoint protection product? Um, whether it's HBSS uh, or it's uh, Semantic Endpoint Protection, McAfee's product, Trend's product, uh, etc. How does a Semantic DLP product play around there? We'll, we'll spend more time um, in the last video, in one of the final videos, uh, about data at the endpoint. 
So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and flip over um, back to the system here. Uh, when we set up end, uh, policies, I'm just going to go an overview of a policy here. We'll spend more detail later. Um, a policy is how we track data, whether that is um, uh, uh, described content, social security numbers, credit cards, uh, pin numbers, you know, data that I can write up. A, a, a pattern around or whether it's more structured data or unstructured data everything within the, the the product deals with a policy so let's go ahead and and up here on the screen go to manage and then go to policy list and you can see that I have a couple of policies already enabled um, how do you know that excuse me uh, real simple when it's green that policy is working and when it is read with a slash through it, that means that that policy is disabled. And you can see how um, it changes nice and, and quickly. One of the awesome parts, or one of the things that I like most about DLP, the semantic product particular, is that a policy applied at, the, uh, at one level or at one area or focus of data loss um, vector, I guess that's the word that I'm looking for, can be applied to all different vectors. Um, so if I set up a policy for data at or a policy here it applies to data at rest, data at motion, and also data at the endpoint. Let's go ahead and re-enable this policy. I don't want to get too uh, in depth, but within the DOP product we have a bunch of template ones, and this is particularly for uh, driver's licenses. Uh, driver's licenses in most are in some states have a pattern that we can write against. Um, and we can uh, give it a name, um, give it a description. You can see whether it's active or suspend the policy. We can add in our different rules. So in this case, I'm tracking whether that that policy is in uh, that driver's license is uh, a California license, an Illinois license plate, a New Jersey license, or a New York license plate, uh, driver's license. Sorry. Um, I can add multiple rules. So in this case, it is going to be. Um, a data identifier, sorry about that, lost my train of thought. And let's go ahead and add in um, Florida, Michigan, Minnesota. Uh, those states also have a template, so this will be uh, drivers, helps if I can spell, M I F L and M N. And then a couple of things here. Um, we can, the default severity level, um, we can change this and add that. We'll focus on that later. Um, but here is really the breadth when it comes down to helping to deal with false positives. Um, if I set it up for wide, it's only going to look for a particular string. Um, if I'm looking at it at the medium level, that is looking at a string and then also um, requires the presence of a driver's license keyword and our state related keyword. Well, what do I know or how do I define those different things? If I click open this box here, let's drag it off to the center. Um, you can actually see what those keywords are. Uh, so driver's license, driver's license, driver's license, driver licenses, you know, uh, DL number, DLS number, LIC, LICS, those types of numbers. And we can actually add in our uh, different categories or, or uh, filters as well here. I can add additional validators. Um, and exclude enabling characters, include those characters, etc. Whether it's going to match on the body, envelope, subject, or different attachments. Um, this is when it comes in the email. So we're going to see in the envelope, in the subject, we're also going to look at the body and all of the attachments for this policy. Um, add an exception. This allows me to add an exception. Uh, an example of a customer that I was working with, um, they were excluding, they were not looking at any incidences, or sorry, any emails on any of their, their policies that had a, a dot mil or came from a dot mil or dot gov, sorry, or went from a dot mil or, or sorry, went to a dot mil or to a dot gov um, address. Uh, so no incidences were generated from there and we can add exceptions. Responses, this is how I actually want to respond to that endpoint. You know, when something happens, what do I want it to do? So uh, I already have one rule. We'll talk about that when we get to the endpoint, but this notifies the user on an endpoint. Um, you can see that we can add multiple response rules in here. Um, go ahead and hit save here for a minute. Go to manage and then response rules. 
this allows us to add these different um, response rules. So there's two different ways, an automated response or a smart response. A smart response allows me to then do something within that incident. I'm often used for um, you know, change the status and notify my level two people that this was for investigation. An automated response allows me to do things such as um, add a note, uh, prevent, block, notify, um, copy a file, send an email notification. So when I get into the prevention portion of things, this is how I'm going to actually prevent. So endpoint prevent and block, not so don't allow, and then notify, send an email out, or actually notify that person at the end. This is an example of a smart response button. We'll talk about that when we get actually into an incident. But what we're going to do is we're going to change it to uh, the status from mark for invest uh, from new to mark for investigation. We're actually going to send an email out to my team at the security group, and we're going to provide a, a link for that. And we can talk about how that works. I'll show it to you when we get into an incident. So really the heart and soul of, of things is setting up our policies and enabling what we want to monitor. Uh, a lot of people just you know throw in a bunch of policies and then quickly overwhelm us, and we don't want to do that. Uh, Semantic and, and ITS, we recommend between three and five policies um, and to really start tracking what is confidential data at our organization. I want to go ahead and take a look at uh, some incidences. I don't have anything at the network yet on my demo box, but I do have some Discover ones, and we can talk a little bit about that. So this, by the way, is all demo data, um, and it looks like that this is actually um, uh, a false positive because it's marking something as a, a driver's license, even though it technically isn't. So let's go ahead and and and, and look at... Let's change this because it looks like my driver's license is not tracking very well. So let's go ahead. Um, you can see I have filters here that allows me to slice and dice all kinds of information here, um, whether that is a, um, a summary or a status, a particular scan. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and take a look here at my discover reports and to see if I can find you uh, a better summary. Flip windows here uh, just because I, I wanted to get a better better match. Um, this is actually an incident. So back up for a minute. I just don't want to want to blow that off. As we can see I had some false positives so I'm gonna have to go through and I'm gonna have to tweak my my policy to see exactly what's happening. All right, so now we're looking at an incident here, and I want to make a couple of notes to call out. First of all, this is all demo data um, that we have set up in the system. So I have some social security numbers that I'm going to match on here. Um, I can see exactly real quick where that um, match came from, right? The body of that, I see the policy, I see uh, the server that it was found at, um, we also had some notifications at the end user. We'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about the file and the application that it ran on. Um, but really, when it gets down to it, we can start correlating things. Um, and this is really where you'll see the power of, of a DLP product to, to be able to correlate what is exactly happening in, in the organization and the environment. So we know that um, this user, uh, ITS Lab slash JJesse, over the last 7, 30 days had a number of instances. Also that machine over the last 7.30 or all time had, had X number of instances and then that policy over time. So this exactly goes to see, you know, uh, allows me to track down and say this is exactly what I'm having or seeing in my environment. History allows me to see exactly what went wrong with this uh, incident over the life of it and then really the key info here. I can then mark this for investigation. This is my smart response button. And what you're going to see is that I'm going to change the status and send an email. Now, um, it's changed the uh, status from new to marked for investigation. And then uh, it is actually going to send out an email, as we talked about. So while we wait, nope, I won't do that now. Um, different, different setup. So um, I'll pull up the email maybe later, and we can actually take a look at what's happening. 
Uh, system and overview allows me to see my different servers that I have set up and running, um, any log information that I have, um, and allows me then to uh, even export or configure how to export these to a log analyzer or a security information manager. You can see I can get some system reports and the settings and protocols that I'm tracking. Um, on the network monitor, network prevent side, you see exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, SMTP traffic, I'm looking for uh, HTTP traffic, I'm looking for FTP traffic, and I also want to make sure that the organization is not using, uh, or person is not sending confidential data out through either uh, uh, MSN, AIM, or Yahoo messengers if those are allowed in our environment. Um, we can actually customize the different applications or protocols that are being used. Um, if there's a protocol that you use in your organization that's different, we can add that here. All right, so I want to um, just kind of wrap this up real quick. A very brief overview of DLP. Um, we'll have different videos that will dive more in depth, and I want to thank you for spending time this, uh, watching this video. Once again, my name is Jonathan Jesse. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email.